The reduction method for 5x5 solves all of the centers and then solves all of the edges and then just does the 3x3 stage. So it's pretty much the same as the beginner method except for the way you pair edges is done with a method called free slice. So if you want tips on how to build centers, then the video will be up here. But here I'm just going to be teaching about the edges because that's really where it's different. So once you finish making all the centers, then you can really just break up the centers in this direction. And you can keep moving them in any amount in this direction, but just not this way. So here we have white, orange, and white, orange. And we have to make sure that we keep these centers all horizontal. So for every R move, you have to do R prime and so on. So if you want to insert this into here, then we have to do R, U prime, R prime which keeps all of the centers parallel. Now that didn't match these up. So if it doesn't match them up, then the other way you can generally insert it is by F, R prime, F prime, R. So you kind of just have to pick one of these depending on which one gets the edge incorrectly. So once you get them correct opposite each other, then you can just push this one in like that, then look for the other one. The other one's over here. So I can just flip that using the flipping algorithm and that's in the description. So it goes like this, R, U, R prime, F, R prime, F prime, R then get these all together. Once you get them all together, don't replace it with any unsolved edge randomly. Instead, replace it with an edge so that it will pair up with something that is already somewhere over here. So for example, this blue red goes with this blue red. So if I insert this one to replace this edge over here like this, then I can just continue solving normally. And the last blue red's over here, so I can join them all together. And then next I have orange and blue. So I'm gonna replace this one with orange and blue because I see another orange and blue over here. So every time I replace this, I'm always replacing it so that I'm getting something new right away. So, so now I pair these up and blue and orange is not on the top anymore. So what I could do from here is just turn the cube upside down and then blue and orange is over here, insert it into here, pair them all together and I could just continue like that. Now, once you've solved four edges on the top and four edges on the bottom, then we can't actually solve any more edges. So we'll just have to fix all the centers from here. And now we have last four edges. So for last four edges, you can do some different things depending on what you see, but there's generally three things that you can do. Yellow and green here with yellow and green. And you should be able to recognize that since these two are flipped, this one is over here. You can join them together like this, flip this one, and then undo that. So that's one thing you can do by doing slice, flip, slice. Another thing you can do is if you see two that are together like this, and you see that their colors match with this one, and this is also the edge that belongs here, then you can put them like this and do M prime U2 M, and that solves them. But when you do that, just make sure that the back edge was unsolved because it will affect that back edge. So another thing is when you see this and this, so you could do slice, flip, slice. In this case, that would actually be pretty good because it solves this one as well. But in general, the better thing to do is to get, if you see them across from each other like this, where you can pair them up like that, and you have another unsolved edge somewhere, you can just take that unsolved edge out. And then when you pair these up, just do it in such a way that you make a few more pieces. So I'm going to insert this one over here. And then there we go. So then you just continue solving edges like that until you finish all of them. All right, so for YAL5, one of your first two centers must be your cross color. So if you solve cross on white, then white must be one of your first two centers. Next, what you do is just like the YAL method for 4x4. Uh, you should already know this. If you don't know it for 4x4, then maybe don't learn it for 5x5 because it's going to be a little bit confusing. So what you just do is start pairing up edges. So here we have white, green, white, green. So of course, just the cross edges like that. And then the last white green is over here. So we can pair them all together like this and then just insert it into the cross. Just like with the Allen 4x4, finish up three cross pieces. Now for the last cross piece, you can either make it now or you can make it later. So here I'm gonna show what happens if you make it now. So what you just do is put it on the opposite side of the cross, because if you put it in the cross, there's no way we'll be able to preserve it as we make the centers. Then once you make a two by three, or once you make the full center, or even once you make a one by three, anytime you get three of the same color, you can just attach this one over here. And you can guarantee that you're never going to break this up again, because you're not going to like, do any turns like this because that's completely useless for the centers. Finish up all of the other centers one by one, make sure you don't break up this cross, and then at the end we can just insert this into the cross. So here it is, all the centers are done, and then you can just insert this into the cross, align the cross, and then we go on to edge pairing. So if you decide instead to do the last cross edge at the end, then right here at the end what you can do is just start pairing up the last cross edge like you would on 4x4. So here we've done two, and then this last one needs to go over here, so we can do this and then join them all together. So here, in order to get it into the cross, instead of like taking it out, realigning the centers and then putting it in, what you can just do is this. So get it so it can go in here and then do this. So from here, you basically just do free slice, but you never have to look at the bottom because it's all done. 
So just as an example to start, we have orange, green, orange, green, and then last orange, green is over here. And then we can get them all together like that and then start replacing it with pieces so that um, we can solve as much together at once. So here we have red, green, red, green, join them together, red, green here, join them together and so on. Just continue until you've solved four edges. Just like with free slice, once you get to the last four edges, you cannot really continue. So I just fix all of the centers. So as you solve the edges, make sure that at least two of them are F2L edges. And then what you're gonna do is just start solving F2L pairs. So uh, just with the edges that you have though. So it's a little bit restrictive in which pairs you can solve. So once you solve these pairs, put them at the back. And then we do last four edges with whatever cases we see on the front. And we use these front two slots in order to join edges together. So for example, blue, red, blue, red, I can get these across from each other and then slice flip and then slice and then now we have these yellow reds so I'll just put the other yellow red over here and so on so I'm just going to keep making edges like this all right so that's it after I finish making the edges I'm just left with a super easy three by three stage and then uh, so basically two pairs in OLL PLL this is another big advantage that you don't have to make the cross after reduction because making the cross can be pretty hard for look ahead so to be completely transparent, I use the L5 method. I like it better than free slice or reduction, but at the same time, the world records are held on reduction right now. So it's up to you which one you wanna choose. I like YAL5 because it has easier look ahead, but you may like reduction more because the centers are easier. So if you want more tips on 5x5, especially on the centers, make sure you go check out my video for beginner tips on 5x5. Also, a huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon for helping make this tutorial possible. And if you want to support cubing tutorials or you just want to see behind the scenes or vote for what video comes out, then you can check out patreon.com slash jperm. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a question, leave it in the comments and I'll see you guys all next time.